introduce myself. I've already taken off my shoes because I've had these on since 8.30, so I just put on my sandals and that's the reason I'm hiding back here. Um, my name is Dr. Elodie Jones and I am um, an assistant professor in the College of Education. And um, I'm a Hayes native-ish, like since middle school, <coughs> high school here. I've got two undergraduate degrees here at Fort Hayes, a master's and a PhD from KU. I moved back here in 2007. Um, I have a daughter that's 22 and a daughter that's 15. And I've been um, on the tenure track. This is my fourth year. So um, just pushing and plugging away at the old academia. Um, my area of emphasis is really technology. That's where my area of study is pretty much inclined to, but one of the things I've really enjoyed teaching is educational psychology. I've taught that for the last three years. Um, and then last year there was the opportunity in advanced education programs, which is the graduate level coursework, to actually move over to that college and um, join um, the graduate faculty. And so I moved over and I teach graduate coursework. So I used to have undergraduate, now graduate coursework, primarily in instructional technology. So if you do decide to enter um, in any coursework in the College of Education, you will probably end up having me because you have to have an introductory um, technology course. It's pretty much the way it goes. So what I want to do is get a feel really quickly before we begin. Who's here? Why you're here? What you're studying? It kind of helps me understand how to kind of hear what I'm saying to you. So I'm not talking above or below. Um, etc. So we just want to tell me who you are, what you're studying, and then why you might be interested in the GRE. I had people last time that had actually <coughs> taken it before, and they're trying to figure out how to pass this deal, or they're just scared, and they thought, well, I'll come to this session. So just be blunt. I'll tell you, as I just said to some of you, when I took the GRE, um, I was a really great student academically, but when it comes to testing, I have a horrible, horrible test anxiety. And I know what I have to do to become successful at testing, but I didn't know that then. Obviously now, having studied a lot about assessment and teaching classes on assessment and curriculum, I understand those necessarily preps to make me successful. Um, so don't feel like you can say I'm just here because I think I might take the GRE someday, or I'm a horrible test taker and that's why I came, or you could admit anything. Maybe you just came because your friend came and offered you free Starbucks or something, I don't know. So um, just admit while you're here, um, but I will tell you my GRE <coughs> test score was complete crap, and I'll say that on camera, it was complete crap. But I still did get into my PhD program at KU um, because I built a really great sense of myself academically, and I worked, I worked as a GTA in the department. Um, I worked closely with a lot of department members, and they said, you know, that's just one cog in the wheel. It's not definitive um, in getting into your program. So also think about that relationship building, establishing yourself in a program working as a GT in a program and seeing that it's not just the only thing that definitively will or will not get you in, depending on where you're going. I say that with a caveat that there are some schools that there is a cut score. If you don't make it, you don't make it. I just happen to have um, an established relationship where I went, so that helped me a little bit. So by no means am I a perfect individual. Um, I just happened to have people that knew me and I knew them, and so it ended up working in my favor. So you can start here and then just meander around. Do they have a minimum score for here at Fort Hayes for, for the master's program, or does it depend on what program? The, pro the program of study. Yeah, each, had, each college has their own cut score. Okay. You just have to look. So, yes, go ahead. My name is Nathan. Um, I'm majoring in psychology, and I am here because I want to learn more about the GRE because I plan on taking it so I can get into grad school. Okay, and where do you want to go to grad school? Do you know? Um, I'm thinking probably here. Oh, cool. So. Very good. Skyler, uh, psychology major as well. I want to do school psychology, and I need to take the GRE in order to do that. Okay. And know where you want to go, what you want to do? Yeah, right here. Very good. And do you plan on pursuing a terminal degree after this? Or are you just getting a master's, or do you think you're going to pursue a PhD? Or? Um, well, I just found out that they, uh, the uh, school psychology program here made some deal with Oklahoma or Oklahoma mm -hmm. Yeah, they're in talks right now. There's several programs that will actually be offered <coughs> on campus for PhDs, um, EDDs, and EDSs, which is Ed Specialist if you're going with education, which is pretty um, sought after in a clinical setting. And that's another thing to consider that I'll tell you. If you think you're going to be in a clinical setting, again, it depends on what you're looking at, but an EDD or EDS is, um, can be, with other endorsements and, and credentials, can be really lucrative too. So. Cool, yeah, that's great, that's great. Okay, 
And my name is Carol. I got my first degree uh, in 2006, a uh, Bachelor of Business Administration, uh, Computer Information Systems, and, and then I, I am finishing up my uh, degree in philosophy this semester. It, uh, and then uh, I'm, I'm thinking of uh, taking a, a Master of Liberal Studies. Uh, I'm interested in grant writing, and so something along that line. And then, then of course, you have to take the test to get into graduate school here. Yes. Uh, otherwise, I do, I do have a master's degree, MS in uh, management that I took with Colorado Technical University, but they didn't require a GRE. Mm -hmm. And KU did not require a GRE for entering the master's, just the PhD program. So I didn't have to take my GRE until I'd established a relationship with that school. That's what was really helpful for me, being a not so good test taker. I'll just say that. Yes. My name's Riley. I'm studying physical therapy and here because that's an entry level exam to get into mm -hmm. school. It is. So yeah, there's lots of those basic entry levels, GRE, GMAT, DAT, <coughs> a whole host of um, money makers out there essentially. That's what they call that's what they call those things. Yes. Uh, I'm Alex, and I'm a media studies major, and I'm here because she didn't want to come alone. She also yes. did this. I read this. I read this deal. See, I'm, I'm supposed to be the hypnotist yeah, deal, but then I got knocked off the there. stage after Bill Nye. Yeah. Now, welcome. Uh, I'm Alex. I'm a psychology major, and I'm like to graduate school soon. Cool. Do you know what area of interest? Uh, either clinical or school. Okay. I'm Peyton, and speech and language pathology major, and so I have to go to grad school <laughs> in order to practice, so I have to take GRE to get in. Very good. And are you going to stay in this area or relocate? Or Hopefully, but I'll apply to about six or eight different places. Yeah, it's very competitive, so very good. Good for you. Yes? April and San Jose. <laughs> yeah, just a second. Yeah, okay. She has a second degree there. Okay. Ashley. Same. <laughs> so y'all came together holding hands and skipping. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's awesome. Good for you. Yes. Uh, my name is Drew. I'm currently an MLS and HHP grad student. I have to take the course to stay in the school after the first semester. Uh, I graduated in 2014 from the University of Colorado with a degree in history and a minor in ethnic studies. And what do you, what's your end goal? Oh, well right now I'm a GA with the basketball team. Uh, I spent the last two years doing JUCO, and at Colorado I was with the basketball team there, so hopefully work back up or fall back on a master's and a high school job or something. So. Yeah. yeah, you're open to whatever. That's cool. Very good. I like that. Yes, sir, in the back. Um, I'm Dakota, and I want to do physical therapy. Uh, I'm trying to get into graduate school. I took the GRE, and I passed the verbal, but not the quantitative or the essay. Okay. The yeah. essay was a lot different from what I thought they were. Yeah, typically, um, just to be really honest with you, there's an entry level exam for the College of Education here um, at Fort Hayes, and it's very common core based, and because most people at your level were <coughs> common core trained, um, or have seen a lot of common core application, it's really become a struggle for a lot of students. And if you've laid out of any math class for a while, Math and foreign language are those things we know. Um, the brain needs repetition to really remember those things and keep them ingrained. Um, so my job here tonight, first of all, welcome. Thank you for coming on a Wednesday night, Hayes, Kansas, 7.30. Um, and you did skip the hypnotist, so I appreciate that. Um, so just to kind of tell you what I wanted to, to um, reiterate on this is I'm just going to give you some basic facts on the GRE. One of the things we know um, about research when it comes to assessment. And I think assessment is so much more pleasant. I just want to assess you. You're going to have a test. I'd rather assess someone. And I think assessment is a lot more um, flowery word that makes us not feel so bad. Um, assessments um, come, with them, come with it, this idea or psychology behind it. And knowing what to expect, it can be like nine tenths of the issue, especially if you have anxiety. So if any of you have test anxiety, you're the type of person who really wants to know what I can expect. And if things change on you like that, then that can throw you off. And I can tend to be a person very similar. So if I already know what I'm gonna have to engage in and what to expect, to me, that's already the nine tenths of the battle. It's not as much content for me as it is the actual test taking. For some of you, you're great test takers, but it'll be more content. So a little bit of this is that um, self-analysis asking yourself, what kind of test taker am I? What kind of support systems do I need? 
how do I study? How do I best study? Do I best study in study groups? Should I study on my own and then go to a study group? These are things that you really need to ask yourself prior to taking this exam. And when you figure that out, then that's how you're gonna tackle this kind of mountain um, or molehill, depending on how you're looking at it, okay? But one of the things we know about test taking or assessments is this idea that um, preparation is important. So going through just the basics of what is on the assessment, so I've kind of outlined, there's a verbal component, a quantitative, and an analytical skills um, component. The verbal is two 30-minute sessions, and they give you all different types of complex questions, sentence equivalences, and there's a reading comprehension section. I can tell you all the way back to second or third grade where I would struggle would have been reading comprehension. So I would have to go back and, and watch videos and do the, do the book, wherever the book was, find the reading comprehension section, and that's what I would study, okay? When we get to the quantitative, it's two 35 minute sections. This can be the real trip for people because we go back to things that we probably haven't looked at for a couple of years. Again, there's all kinds of preps out there that I'm gonna share with you tonight. They're not, I'm not saying if you watch these videos, you're gonna be some maestro and be able to go you know, whip out the quantitative. But what I'm saying is it's a stepping stone to figure out what you need to do. Um, and then lastly is analytical skills. Again, this is a section that's two different 30 minute time um, essays. And then you're gonna ask two tasks. The first one will ask you to state and support your opinion on an issue, and the second one will ask you to evaluate an argument. So then again, that, that gets into reasoning and the logic and those types of things. So right away, you're saying, well, that's not a problem. I knock out the verbal, okay? On the verbal, there's a whole host of words. If you don't know the word bank, it's like an ungodly amount of words. But there's some that they've, that they've come up with that are like the top 100 words that you will most prevalently see. So you could start there. Another thing that you can start that I'll talk about is that you probably have something kind of like this or a tablet um, or an iPad that when you're sitting there waiting for your role to be changed or you're sitting there between classes, you could be going through the verbal components in, the, in 10, 15 minutes. I mean, you have to use your time wisely when you're going to start taking an exam like this and you want to start early because again, anxiety is one of those things. If you try to cram, it's going to make it worse. Um, I'm one of those people who can be very last minute and it makes me more productive. That's not what you want to do on the GRE. Just, just to go out there on that deal. So I would not wait. Um, the approximate time is about four hours, and I do link you to um, the ETS website that talks a lot more about the actual assessment. Um, it is not a cheap test to take, so think about that when you go in. I think when I took it was about $175, so inflation has been $35, which I guess isn't so bad. Um, what I really want to point you to is this area where it says free. I mean, this is attractive. So there's some power prep software that you can download. And I do happen to be a big believer in ETS and the things they offer. ETS makes most of the assessments and they're kind of your go guru or go-to on um, how to prep, what's actually on the assessment, what are the time components. I mean, they have everything down to a T. If you can't find it on the ETS website, you haven't looked enough. It's all out there. So I would say before you even take the GRE or think about looking through the book, Go to the ETS website, go to the GRE section, and start really understanding what is close <coughs> and positioning your brain and behavior to just start thinking, these are the areas I'm going to be assessed on. Here's my area of focus. If it's quantitative, start in the quantitative, okay? And then tackle and make a list of how you're gonna kind of knock these things out, okay? So there's all kinds of free stuff here. Um, Dakota, did you use any of the math review or the math conventions? What did you use to prep and what would you say you would change now knowing in hindsight, just um, reflectively maybe? Yeah, I took some of the practice tests, but they didn't give me answers Okay. at the end of it, so it's kind of like, well. Yeah, it's like, is it right, not right? Yeah. Okay. That's another thing. Um, I was just talking to a grad student actually here, and he's taken the GMAT. Um, and, I'm, and besides prepping, so statistically speaking, when you start doing research on all of this stuff, the statistics say there's two indicators as far as how you'll do. Obviously, you have to know your content. You can't walk in and just be like, I didn't study because I'm not smart. Probably not. What I do know you have to do is you have to know what to expect, which is what we've talked about. The other thing is the modality in which you're learning the material. And what I mean by that is if I picked up this book, this giant book of knowledge, and I did all of this. So I'm telling you what I did. Don't do this. I did this entire book like front to back, cover to cover, what I felt like was a million times. I knew this book really, really well. Everything I did was on paper, 
And I was like, I'm prepped, I'm ready to go. And then I get in and I start taking the assessment on what? A computer. Okay, so the brain works differently like that. So if you write things and it goes in your brain really well, great. Some of us are verbal, some of us are kinesthetic. Like you need to actually feel the pages of a book and write in the book and that's the way you learn. So a lot of this goes down to the psychology of how we learn as individuals and I don't know all of you, okay? So that's something you really need to think about is how do I learn best? And I know about myself, if I did this entire book, I would have been more successful had I taken a written exam where I picked up a pencil and touched it to paper because that's how it went in my brain on the initial study. So to combat that, even if you are gonna use this book, one of the things, as Dakota points out, is you can buy test sets. So if you, the three of you, you could go buy a test bank from ETS that would maybe give you six practice exams, you each take two, and it's gonna generate it just like you're in the exam. It's literally a simulation. And I would say do that because the other point I'm making is simulating the experience is another indicator of your success. The more you can simulate what it's like that day, the more you're gonna feel comfortable when you walk in and you're gonna say, I've done this, I know what to expect. And that's really a lot of the battle, is, is having the psychology of feeling comfortable and knowing what's coming up. And that's literally like turning your air conditioner down to where you're like slightly chilled and you might have to wear a sweater, that's a testing center. Um, not having anything on but the basics that you would need. Locking yourself in a room in a quiet space and actually taking it over four hours and simulating, setting a timer simulating what that would be. You do that a couple times, plus you go over all your prep material, it really does set you up for a little bit more, um, at least a little bit more of a successful system. Okay, so those are just what I would say are those initial overarching, just test taking in general. You get ready to take a test on your first test in a class. Why is it you're anxious? Because you don't know what to expect. And after you've had that first test, you're like, I gotta be, that wasn't so bad. Now I know what to expect, I know how they test, and I know where the material came from. You already do better on your second test because you already have a little bit of an idea of how things roll. And that's, that's the anxiety that you feel most of the time is the unexpected. So you already have all this because ETS is giving you a whole host of information, okay? So those are the things I would primarily do and think about in this situation. Um, studying multiple modalities, um, thinking to yourself, how do I best study? And then asking yourself where are areas that you really struggle. Like I, I immediately would go to quantitative and I would probably study quantitative for 75% of my prep because I know that I wasn't a great um, math student. I just didn't have great high school prep. <coughs> my math teacher cared more about the baseball team than he ever <coughs> cared about his math students. And so I really struggled. And I didn't like math until I got to Calc and Calc Methods here at Four Days, which is a long time to go without liking something that's so cool. But I didn't have good prep. And so then I was always scared and anxious because my God, I was not so great in high school, so how am I gonna pass this GRE exam? And that's what I, that I honed in on, was that the quantitative sections, okay? So think about yourself as a learner, what do you need, what kind of support system do you need, how do you best learn, and then look at these areas that you're actually going to um, be, be tested on, essentially, and know exactly what to do. So some of this stuff, this is really easy, but if you've any taken, have any of you taken a test through ETS where you go to a testing center? ACT, SAT, you get a voucher. Um, if you haven't taken one recently, you need to know it's kind of like a pat down at the airport. Literally, you, you, you get a locker and you put all your stuff in it. You can go in with very minimal things. Obviously not a cell phone. They provide like a pencil and stuff for you. You have a voucher, you have to have your ID, all these little things that you would get there and go, oh my God, I'm just here to take a test and they want like my DNA. So, Something to think about, like you have to go with the voucher, you need your ID, you should take a sweatshirt, what if it's cold and you're a cold person? I'd be miserable the whole time, my toes would fall off in my shoes and I'd be like, what? I can't pass this test. So think about those types of things, they do make a difference. Again, it's probably going to be cold, take layers of clothing. Do you know where you're going? Do you know how fast these exams fill up? When my students get ready to take an exit exam through ETS to be qualified teachers in the state of Kansas, the ones that they were signing up for in November were already filling up in February and March for this last, this last year. If you want to take it at Fort Hayes, they only have so many testing carols. So if you're like, oh, I'm not going to take it, no, register now. And what does that also psychologically do? Uh, you might get your butt in gear because you know you're going to have to take that test. Set the date, get it out there, get it on the books, pay for it, and then you have a goal that you're shooting for. Somewhere on the internet, I'm sure if you Googled it, you could find out 
how would I plan my days over a 30-day period, a 45-day period, a 60-day period to study and prep for this? It's kind of like couch to 5K, and there's an app that tells you what to do and how to get ready for a 5K. I'm pretty sure there's probably an app that even programs it into your phone that would say, today, make sure you study quantitative for 45 